Here is a question for you all. Is 1 a prime number? If it is not, why exactly 1 is not a prime number? Guys, welcome back to my channel Speed Math, where you will find a lot of stuff related to maths. I am your mentor Sunil Sharma and in today's video, we are going to discuss hidden reason behind certain mathematical concepts. So without any further ado, let's begin. So friends, why exactly 1 is not a prime number? Whenever I ask this question to many students, their answer is mixed. Some say it's a prime number, while others say it is not, while the remaining they don't have a clue about it. Whenever I ask them okay, why it is not a prime number, their answer is like teacher said so or they have read somewhere. Well, one is neither prime nor composite, but in this video we are going to dwell exactly why one is not considered as a prime number. The confusion begins with the definition a person might give of a prime. According to this person, a prime number is a positive whole number which is divisible by one and itself and there is the biggest confusion. The number 1 is divisible by 1 and itself, so as per his definition, 1 should be prime. But we all know that 1 is neither prime nor composite, right? What is missing in this definition is that the two factors has to be two distinct factors. When I say 1 and itself, there are two factors and these two factors should be different or should be distinct. So is 1 prime or not? Let's try to remove the ambiguity by saying a prime number has exactly two distinct factors that is one and itself. Whenever this happens, that number is called as prime number. Let's take an example. Two has got two factors, one and two. It satisfies the definition. Therefore, two is considered as a prime number. Three, again, it has two factors, one and three, right? There are two factors, therefore three satisfies the definition. Hence, three is a prime number. What about four? 4 has got how many factors? 1, 2 and 4. So 4 has 3 factors. It does not satisfy the definition. Therefore, 4 is not a prime number. So whenever I say factors, we are talking about a set of natural numbers or set of integers. Remember that. Now coming back to 1. 1 has exactly one factor. It doesn't have two factors. It doesn't satisfy the definition. Therefore, 1 is not a prime number. So let me reiterate myself. A whole number is said to be a prime number if it has exactly two distinct divisors. One of the divisors should be one and the other divisor should be the number itself. I hope you have understood the definition. Now it is very very clear why exactly one is not a prime number. Moving to the next fact. Why the symbol of rational number is Q? Symbol for natural number is N. Symbol for whole number is W. Symbol for integer is I or Z. So it was very convenient to have first letter as a symbol. So why didn't mathematicians select R as a symbol for rational number? Why did they choose Q as a symbol for rational number? To understand this, let's understand what are rational numbers. The word rational is the adjective form of the word ratio. Meaning, the rational numbers are ratio of two integers where the denominator is not equal to zero. Let's have a look at certain ratios. First example is 10 upon 2. Let's take another example, 15 upon 3. The answer is 5. Observe in both the ratio, numerator is a dividend and denominator is a divisor. And the answer in both the cases is the quotient. So apparently, all rational numbers will give you quotient as their end answer. Any rational number happens to be a fraction or a ratio and it is dividend upon divisor and the answer happens to be quotient. In other words, what I'm trying to say, rational number is collection of quotients and that is the reason why the symbol for rational number is Q. After rational number, irrational number came into picture and Pythagoras was responsible to create irrational number and the collection of rational and irrational number is termed as real number. Moving on to the other fact. Why certain irrational numbers are called as certs? The meaning of the word cert is twofold. In mathematics, it refers to a number that is partly rational and partly irrational. 
In phonetics, it refers to sounds uttered without vibration of the vocal cords. And so we can say it's voiceless. In Latin, surds means deaf or mute. So if you put the two together, you get the surds are mute or voiceless numbers. This is actually not a totally loopy statement as you may know. Certain ratios of numbers give pleasing sounds and have been described as far back as the Pythagoras time. Pythagoreans were credited with the discovery that the sound produced by an instrument is defined by the ratio and I press a finger the length of the two parts. Example, one speaks of major third which is 4 is to 5 or a minor third 5 is to 6 in music and this has a mathematical description 4 is to 5 or 5 is to 6. In fact, if you attempt to get a sound which is produced from the ratio which is not a rational number, you don't get a pleasant sound. It appears that the first European mathematician to adopt the terminology of thirds was Gerardo of Cremona. I would like to define thirds in my own way. Well, S-U-R-D-S we can try to understand in this way. S stands for something, U stands for under, RD stands for radical and S stands for sign. So we can say third stands for something under radical sign and that something under the radical sign has got certain conditions to be met and therefore we can call those numbers as certs. So guys, how was this video? Please share your feedback in comment section and let me know if you want me to do more such videos. Guys, if this video has helped you somehow, do hit like button and do subscribe to my channel. Also, do share this video with your friends and let them know these important mathematical facts. Thank you for all your support. Stay tuned for my next one. Till then, keep learning. Peace.